Hello, everyone. Welcome back to freepilotgroundschool.ca. This is our seventh lesson, uh, or, or lesson number seven, exercise seven on climbing. Uh, prior to this lesson, you should have reviewed lesson seven in your flight training manual. We can have three different types of climb. Uh, the first one, we can be climbing at our best rate of climb speed. Uh, this is uh, the type of climb that we want to use when we want to have the minimum time to altitude. So it's the greatest climb in the least amount of time. We can also have a best angle of climb, which is a slower speed. It's the speed that we uh, has the best climb for the minimum distance. So this will be if we need to clear an obstacle. And lastly, we have an en route climb speed. This is just kind of a faster climb than best rate of climb. If we're in no hurry to get to an altitude, we just want to get somewhere uh, quickly. Keep in mind, these uh, diagrams here are just vastly exaggerated. Uh, there's not too many training airplanes that will climb at these kind of angles. So just keep that in mind. Bit of theory about climbing. Keep in mind that rate of climb is a function of excess thrust, and this is important. Climbing is not if we have too much lift. If we have too much lift, that's how we end up doing a loop. But we're just doing a climbing. We're climbing at a constant rate. It's a function of excess thrust. You can take a look at this diagram. As we increase our speed, uh, we will have, uh, we, we require more power. The reason we require more power is because there is more drag on the aircraft. So at the very minimum here, if we take a look at the bottom right here, this is where we have the minimum uh, drag, okay? Then as we accelerate, we have more, uh, let's say at the top here, we have more drag, so it's gonna be your top speed. And also because of the way you have propeller efficiencies and things like that, you have different power available. You can see here, so we, okay? And so at a certain point, you're gonna have a maximum difference. This is where you have the, max, uh, the maximum excess thrust available. And so this is called reserve power. And this is where you're going to have your best rate of climb. There are some factors affecting climbs. The biggest uh, one is going to be density altitude. So the density altitude is the equivalent altitude for temperature and pressure. So let's just say it is uh, cold outside and it's a thousand feet, a uh, thousand feet above sea level. Let's say it's uh, 13 degrees out. Well, that's about your density altitude. But let's just say it is now 30 degrees out. Well, the air is going to be a lot less dense. And so the equivalent altitude might be 3,000 feet. Uh, it, it's, the aircraft will perform the same at this altitude and pressure as it would if it was much cooler, but you're at a higher altitude. So that's the big one we're going to be talking about. It'll show up here in climbs. You're also going to be discussing it a lot in takeoffs because it has a huge uh, impact on your takeoff distance, how dense the air is. Also, flaps will affect your climb. If you're climbing with flaps, uh, obviously, uh, the aircraft will not climb as well, but that's pretty rare. It's not too often that you're going to be climbing with flaps. So talking a bit more about high density altitude, uh, that, so that's uh, you have low atmospheric pressure and high temperature, decreasing aircraft performance. So because you have less dense air, you're obviously going to have less lift. Less dense air means the engine is producing less power, and that also means that you need higher air speeds. So it's kind of a triple whammy how it affects uh, the aircraft. So not only do you have less lift, the engine will produce less power, and then you need a higher true air speed as well. Uh, secondly, we also have humidity. Humidity decreases aircraft performance because it reduces the engine power. Obviously, if we have quote unquote more water and less oxygen going into the engine, well, it's not going to run nearly as well. Let's talk about some sources of yaw, and these will become apparent when you go flying, and you will notice them right away when you start climbing the aircraft and your instructor says you have control uh, after takeoff, and all of a sudden you're like, wait a minute, I have to hit the right rudder pedal all the time. This is kind of strange. Why do I have to do this? Well, now you're going to know. So the propeller turns clockwise on most uh, airplanes, especially ones that were not built in the Soviet Union. So when we apply power, so it's when we take off or climb, the application of power will cause a left turn because the torque will go to the left. So the way to uh, resolve this is apply right rudder. Secondly, we have slipstream. The more power we have on, the more we have kind of a corkscrew air pattern around the aircraft. It hits the tail on the left side, forcing the tail to the right, meaning the nose goes to the left. Again, 
we have to apply right rudder. You can have a gyroscopic effect uh, in a tail dragger. It, you start your takeoff in a nose high attitude and then you lower the nose, so you raise the tail up. And when you do that, you have a gyroscopic effect that wants to uh, push your aircraft uh, to the left. Again, we apply right rudder uh, when we lift the tail on a tail dragger. And lastly, we have something called asymmetric thrust or P factor. So in a climb, if we think, uh, if you take a look here, the downgoing uh, propeller blade and the upgoing uh, propeller blade in a climb will have different angles of attack. And so in a climb, the downgoing blade on the right side will have a higher angle. It'll, it'll strike the air at a greater angle provide more thrust on the right side, forcing the airplane to the left. Again, we have to apply right rudder. So you need to know this for your written test, but the thing you need to know for your flying is whenever you're climbing and taking off, it's right rudder. And uh, depending on how powerful your aircraft is, it might be anywhere from just a little bit of right rudder in a Cessna 150. Or if you're flying a tail dragger like 185 and you just uh, firewall the throttle, it will be close to full right rudder to keep that airplane straight on the runway. Let's discuss the procedure for entering and leveling off from a climb. The procedure is attitude power trim. So first off, we're going to pitch to the appropriate attitude. So it might be a gentle nose up, or if we're leveling off, we're pitching down to the cruise attitude. We're going to adjust the power. So on a climb, it's going to be full power, generally speaking. And then you're going to trim to relieve any control pressure. When leveling off, the general rule of thumb is use 10% of your rate of climb to begin your level off. If you're climbing at 1,000 feet a minute, what that means is that 100 feet prior to your target altitude, you're going to begin your level off. Let's watch a video now of the procedure for entering and leveling off from a climb. To enter a climb, we're going to use the acronym APT, Attitude Power Trim. Raise the nose to the nose up attitude. Add full power. Before you add full throttle, though, make sure the mixture is fully rich. Once the aircraft is at the desired airspeed, trim on any control forces. Picture how the aircraft will look like when climbed at the best angle of climb for approximately 60 knots. Notice the medium nose up attitude. As you just saw in the video, there are some important instrument indications in a climb. First off, if we look on the left, we have an airspeed indicator. The airspeed will show a, a speed that's less than the cruise speed. The attitude indicator will show a nose up attitude. The altimeter will show an ink, it will be increasing, and the vertical speed indicator on the bottom right will show a positive trend indicating a climb. So let's review. The procedure for a climb is attitude, power, trim. The rate of climb is a function of excess thrust. The factors that affect the climb performance are air density and flaps, and the sources of yaw are torque slipstream, gyroscopic effects, and asymmetric thrust. 
That concludes this lesson on climbs. Uh, thanks for joining me. We'll see you in our next lesson on descents.